I have been so tense and just so physically ill because I've been so stressed out about all of this. Whew, we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> I hardly have like any makeup that isn't packed away right now. So I just have like the crap that's on my desk and some like CVS lashes that I just went and bought. So let's just go into this. I have already moisturized my face and everything. And tonight we're playing Dungeons and Dragons at the office and I wanna look good. Also, if I don't mention any products that I'm using, I will link them in the description box below, but I'm gonna be priming my face with the Tarte Shape Tape pour and prime balm. Oh, I also like don't have my normal mirror here either. So I'm just gonna be using all the mirrors that I can find. <laughs> I hope that from this story, I can help some of you with uh, the home buying process and you can learn from my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I wish I had somebody to kind of help me along the way and I had no one to help me along the way. This is the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation and then the Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation Hourglass. And this is in the shade Ivory and this is in the shade Medium Neutral. I don't understand how this is Ivory. This is not Ivory to me. This is like tan AF. So as you guys know, on the 4th of July, I was supposed to be driving out to Nashville. I was supposed to be driving out to Nashville. I had everything scheduled. I had the car service. I don't have a mirror. I had a service like to come pick up my car, everything good to go. My offer had been accepted for my house. I was on track for closing on July 1st. Some shit went down. First, let's start with the location of my place. It is kind of near the Gulch. It's about two miles away from downtown. I know a lot of you guys were asking. I'm purchasing this home as more of an investment property because I personally don't really want to live that close to town. I don't really want to be able to walk to things. That's just not really my cup of tea. I'd rather be further out in the country and have my chickens and have a garden and have some acreage and maybe even a pond and like a can-am and like I want horses and I just like want to have like a little a little farm. I decided I would purchase this in an area that would be really easy for me to rent out to someone long-term or a family when I was ready to move. But I figured if I moved out in the country to begin with, I would, I'm such a hermit that I would never meet anybody. And I don't mean anybody as in like a guy, I just mean friends and like, you know, I'm moving to Nashville. I don't know anybody there except my real estate agent. So I plan to live there for like, I don't know, probably like, a year or a year and a half or so to get my bearings and figure out where I would want to purchase, then I would go ahead and purchase like the home that I'm gonna live in like for a while, like indefinitely basically. Um, this is the Jouer Concealer in the shade Wheat. Ooh, that is a sexy name, very sexy. Um, so I put in my offer and it was accepted and then we went to escrow and I have never purchased a home before. So I have never done this process. I really don't know anything about it. I tried to watch YouTube videos about it and I just tried to prepare myself a little bit, but I was referred to a lender through someone that I know through my family who does very well in real estate himself. And she ended up just being a complete like shit show. She wanted like all these crazy docs, which you have to provide anyway, but like she wasn't reading what I was saying about certain things. So without giving you guys too much information to my private life, <laughs> basically at the end of the day, I was told that we closing was all on time and everything was good. And then if you guys remember, I had two accounts of fraud on my credit. I had like an 840 credit score. I've worked since every single day of my adult life. I've been very aware of my credit score and how important it is. My dad really drilled that into me. One fraud account from Sprint that went to collections. I have never used Sprint in my life. And then I had a Cox Cable one. Well, the Sprint one came at a really bad time and I was really upset about it. I got it taken off immediately. I got the police report. I got it all handled as soon as possible. And I got that handled so quickly because I knew that I was going to purchase a home in the near future. So got it taken care of, got it off my credit. My credit still hadn't gone all the way up, but it was, you know, where it needed to be. So then they did a credit check for, for with this lender and it was great. And she's like, your credit score is actually like an 800. I'm like, it's usually an 840, thank you very much, but wonderful. <laughs> so she was like, yeah, this isn't bad. We're, we're on track for closing, blah, blah, blah. Then the second fraud on my account popped up and I cried for almost a day. 
I was so upset and she was like, oh, you should be good. Like we already pulled it. I'm like, okay, cause this is definitely gonna drop my credit score even more until I get this this one sorted out. Oh, there's a giant hair in my eye. Oh my God, where is it? I feel it, I can't find it. So I was relieved that she said that. I was like, okay, great. So then my credit score, I kept getting dinged. It, ke it kept telling me, oh, there's a new inquiry, a hard inquiry. And so I'd look and I'm like, who, what is all this? Like, you know, I'm all already freaked out because of the fraud. Then I get in touch with her, I'm like, I keep getting all all these notices from Identity Force that my credit's being just run um, tons of times and you guys already did it, you said. She said, oh, well now we're, now Wells Fargo's doing it. I didn't even know she was like shopping this out to Wells Fargo. So then she tells me that my credit score has drastically dropped because of the fraud and asks me to explain what it is. So I write a letter explaining what it is. I include the police reports. I'm like, this is fraud. You can take a look at my credit. I've never had a late payment ever and I owe no debt. Meanwhile, she's like not keeping me updated during this process. I'm just sitting here on pins and needles. Like, oh my gosh, the motorhomes, the moving trucks, all this stuff is booking up through August. Okay. Like, and my stepmom is like on my nuts a little bit. She's like, Hey, we need to book this. Like, are you still good to close on the first? Like, are you an escrow? Well, I'm like, yes, I've been told that everything's good. And so we jumped the gun. I jumped the gun and rented a Penske truck, scheduled movers, scheduled my car to be picked up and shipped, scheduled the motorhome, which cruise America, I would never use. Screw you guys. You guys gave me the dirtiest motorhome. The fridge didn't work. Like disgusting, disgusting. I have like hardly any eyeshadow palettes here right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the Through My Eyes I Love Sorry Ian ColourPop palette. It looks like this. I really like this one. I think I'll use the golds up in the top there. Maybe this one. So she tells me Wells Fargo can't do my loan because of the fraud on my credit. Even though I wrote a letter, even though they had the police report, they didn't really care, which was dumb on their part because they could have had an awesome account. So anyways, she's like, we're gonna fund it in internally. And I'm like, okay, wonderful. I have all this shit planned. She knows that I have all this stuff scheduled too. Like never once did she say, Hey, I know you've never done this before. You might want to wait and schedule all that stuff until, you know, whatever. She never said anything. It's not her job to say anything, but as a decent human being, you'd think that she would have every day. I'm like, do you have any updates? Do you have any updates? Do you have any updates? And then I get another credit check on my credit. And this is like the day before the movers are coming and I've got like three different people coming over to my house to help me move. She's like, oh, we should have an answer by, you know, by tomorrow, but everything looks good. So then on the third, the movers are waiting outside. I still haven't heard from this woman. I'm just paying the movers to sit outside my effing house. I've paid them $420 by this point. And I'm just like, I've got the Penske truck and everything. And then I'm just like waiting to hear, like, cause I'm like, I am not gonna start driving all the way out to Nashville if my shit is not good to go. So I just had the movers sit there and chill. And then by the time like 1130 hit, I hadn't heard from her still. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to send everybody home. I sent the movers home, you know, just paid from the time that they were there. And I was like, you know what? Sorry. I don't know what the hell is going on, but I was so relieved the moment I sent the movers home. I was like, you know what? Even if I have to pay for all of this, I have been so stressed out the past two weeks that I've literally been sick to my stomach. I've had a headache for the past two weeks on and off. I have been so tense and just so physically ill because I've been so stressed out about all of this and like packing up a house and like, it was all just too soon to be honest. Like I won't be doing that now. Like when I move, I will be giving myself a good couple months to like get everything in order and do it in a way that is doable for me because my mental health is important and I wasn't thinking about that. Anyway, Anyways, she calls me the next day and we've already picked up the motorhome and everything. And she basically tells me that their internal underwriters ran my credit again. And even though she told me they could use the original credit thing that they run, they ran, which was, you know, within the highest bracket for a mortgage you can get. I swear she doesn't know what she's doing. Like a lot of like the things that she would say and do, she sounds like she's never done this before. And that's coming from someone who has never done this before. Like she didn't know they were gonna pull another credit report and then told me that they weren't and then they did. Like what, what the hell? Like I didn't even authorize that. She tells me, so sorry, but we, we're not gonna be able to do this. I'm gonna send you um, a termination letter, blah, blah, blah. Basically my realtor's like, dude, we need to use use the local lender that I always use. And I'm like, all right, let's give it a shot. She, this lady tells me she's going to call me this past Monday, which was a day ago because she was going to interview. She had an interview with one of their investors and they were going to make it work. She never called me. It's Wednesday. But when I'm filming this, it's Wednesday. And she still never got back to me. Like that's how 
shitty she is at her job. We're in Mercury retrograde right now. And I was basically like, whatever happens is meant to happen. I don't know why I'm meant to stay in San Diego for longer, but everything was working against me. Like I kid you not. When I say everything was working against me, everything was working against me. For bronzing, I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Medium Deep Matte Bronzer. It looks like this. Like even super random things like the fridge not working on there. And then someone that's moving out there with me. Uh, actually, I've talked to my housekeeper who watches all my animals and everything. She's an amazing woman. I talked her to <laughs> moving out there with me and she's open for the adventure. And then her roommate that was gonna take over her place fell through. Just like a bunch of random stuff that was like, I feel like the universe was telling me, you're not ready for this. I, you know, returned the moving truck and they refunded me, thank goodness. I had to eat the cost on the motorhome, which was like $3,000. <laughs> I'm just trying not to be upset about it because now I learned the lesson, a valuable lesson. You can't plan anything until you sign on the dotted line. Hopefully that helps some of you that are out there. Just don't jump the gun like I did. Even if somebody tells you everything's good to go, like don't do it until you sign everything. We ended up taking the motorhome to Lake Skinner for 4th of July. And then we found out that the motorhome fridge didn't work when we were out there trying to cool off our beers and pizza and our food and everything. So that was interesting. It was just, the universe was just messing with my life so hard. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna ride this wave. And I don't know why this is all happening. It sucks. Clearly it's happening for a reason. So my perspective is just like, whatever's going on, I'm gonna figure it out whether I move in two months, whether I move at the first of next year, whatever. So I have a new lender working on it and it looks like it's gonna go through. Even so, I don't think I'll move for the next few months because I just, I don't wanna be stressed out about moving, you know, across the country. Like I need, I just need to give myself some time to like pack up and do my thing the right way. I just, hope that that freaking story will help some of you guys if you are buying a house or are planning on it in your future like don't plan anything until you have signed everything basically that is the reason why i'm still in san diego i'm gonna use the kristen leanne urban decay beauty beam palette uh so many of you guys hit pan on this but like oh it's so pretty so I'm just trying to like stay positive about it, you know? And like, yeah, I lost some money and that was my own fault. And now I know that. And now I know what to expect. Good thing about it is that I'm not like so attached to the home that I'm buying. I love it, yes, but it was more of an investment property. So it's not like my dream home where I was like, oh, I'm not gonna find another one exactly like it, you know? So that's one plus two. The universe wants me to be in San Diego right now for whatever freaking reason. So maybe we'll figure that out. Don't know. It also would have really sucked to have gone on the road with a motorhome with a fridge that doesn't work. Can you imagine how many warm Coronas there would have been? That would have been really sucky. I'm going to the river in September. So I feel like, I don't know. I don't even know. Like maybe my house is just going to sit empty. Maybe I'll rent it out long-term right off the bat. I don't really know. I still am kind of in this like holding pattern where I'm not really sure what's going on. All I know is that I'm supposed to be in San Diego right now. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay here until there is a sign. Okay. Okay, I could not talk and do my brows, so my brows are done. I wanted to tell you guys about one of the signs, like, or not signs, but like just one of the things that was working against me too. <sighs> so when I found out this fraud hit, it was the day that they ran my credit at the initial lender for the first time. And I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta get this off here. So I filed a police report immediately. The moment I found out and I called the collection company, I got all the information. Like I even have the person's address. They live in Las Vegas and I have their phone number and I kind of want to show up on their doorstep and leave a bag of smoking shit. But I won't, because I don't have time for that. <laughs> I'm also nowhere near Vegas. So I filed the police report and everything, and I called Cox Cable. There's this fraud affidavit packet that you have to fill out where you have to like spend around an hour making all these copies. You gotta get a notary to sign stuff, like all this. So I requested this from Cox four times. And every time I called, I had to sit on hold forever, just deal with their automated system and whatnot. Finally, on the fifth call, I said, I am moving in a couple of days and I'm not even going to be able to access this fraud packet at this address any longer if you don't get it to me before I move. She pulls it up and everything and she makes a new report because she said she wanted to make another one just in case so it would go through to their fraud department or whatever. And she's like, okay, you're gonna receive this in, in the mail. Can you please verify the address that you have? Because you said that you've sent three of these or four of them or whatever by now and I I haven't received a single one. And I'm so frustrated at this point. I, this, it had been a month and a half. So I was just like, wow, this is taking forever. She go, she repeats the address to me and it's the fraudster's address in Las Vegas 
that she had been sending the fraud affidavit package to. Well, not her, but the last person who had done it, the last few people that had done it, had been calling the fraudster and then also sending my fraud affidavit package to them in Nevada. So these people are now aware that there is a police report being filed and all this stuff. And I was just like, I cannot believe that when someone calls you to tell you that this account, this entire account is fraudulent, you use the account, account address that's fraudulent and send the fraud package that I couldn't even, I was just shocked. Like how can you be this unattentive or and not paying attention to detail? Like this is crazy. Like this is my credit we're talking about, like which is basically your whole life. So I went ahead and finally got the fraud affidavit package. Finally, this was like on the 2nd or something like that of July. And they just called me this morning and they finally got it all and like told the um, collection agency that it was fraud and all of that. But it, it took like almost two months. Like it's so crazy how long it took. And I just wanna say like, if you guys care about your credit at all, I would get with an agency that will tell you when someone runs your credit, etc. I was actually with LifeLock during that whole time, both those fraud things, and LifeLock never told me that there was an account open with my name. So I canceled with LifeLock and actually got with Identity Force and they have been really great. I have only been with them for a couple months now, but so far I highly recommend it. Like anytime there's a credit check or anything changed, changes or even if there's a sex offender that moves in near me or whatever it sends me a text message so man the last few months i have really really been through it but you know what everything happens for a reason and it was meant to happen for some reason or another and i don't really know what it is maybe i will maybe i'll never know let's see i'm gonna line my lips with this this is the flower beauty petal pout lip liner in toffee then i'm gonna use um the color pop lipstick in what's your sign this lip liner is too dark but i don't have much of a selection at the moment because everything's in boxes. Everything's in boxes, but I did rearrange my couch the other day because I was like, okay, I need to change like right now. Um, I'm also gonna use uh, the shade Butter just kind of for the center. Oh, I thought it was lighter. <laughs> it didn't do a damn thing. I'm gonna take the Morphe Prep and Set. Uh, So um, that's what's going on in my life right now. Uh, how, how's yours going? I hope you guys had a great 4th of July. Instead of staying at the campground since our fridge didn't work, we ended up going into, into Temecula and going to this like really red blues club, which you might've seen on Instagram stories if you watch my Instagram stories. Speaking of Instagram, I did create like a seventh Instagram. <laughs> I swear I have so many. I've got my animal one, I have my beauty one and Arctic Fox. And I, I created one called Kristen Leanne also. That's basically you have to request to be, I already posted like four photos. It's an Instagram basically where I'm putting stuff that isn't, it doesn't go on. Like Instagram for me is what I do for a living and it's, it's m my creative, outlet, but I also wanted one that's more like photos of food or like funny memes or just like photos out camping or family stuff or whatever that I could post up there that I still wanted to have. If you wanna follow me on there, you're more than welcome to. It might take me a minute to a preview. I think I have a thousand requests sitting in there and I literally have to click this on every single one. I'll get to it, but just wanted to let you know that that is there in case you were interested in kind of like the behind the scenes stuff of my life, like that's not all curated and whatever. So thank you guys for watching. <sighs> Nashville, I will, I will be there soon, come hell or high water, but I don't know what, what we've got to do here in San Diego first. So just along for the ride. Um, and as always, we will see in the next video. I'm gonna see what I can film. I have so much stuff in boxes, but I feel like I can still do some more animal videos. And if you didn't know, I have an animal channel as well. So I'm gonna try not to make this the longest outro in the history of YouTube. So <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.